Good evening, friends. A big hello to everyone at Manthan, and uh, thank you to Anuradha for creating this wonderful space. I never stop appreciating it every visit. So, Mira, you've been a friend, a dear friend, for many years. um you have been a great supporter of the blue cross and the animal welfare work you've adopted animals from blue cross and uh, we have traveled together had some very interesting trips including one to bhutan where we bumped into anuradha <laughs> um so i know a lot about your work and i've been following your work very closely and i'm a great admirer but perhaps there are some in the audience who don't know about your work so i would love you to tell us about your work you you speak about it so passionately so over to you meera thanks amla for this thanks for coming here despite your mad schedule thanks manthan who are friends but inviting me to be here today four years back i started youth for jobs to work with youth with disabilities my vision was actually very simple um to identify train and place in jobs the most vulnerable sections of our society which is also neglected persons with disability mainly from villages the work turned out to be far more complex than i ever imagined because i'd been in the space for over a decade uh, everybody around us said you can't you can't for example the parents of the children themselves did not have faith that their son or daughter can actually get a job in the villages especially girls were kept hidden in their homes because the family thought that disability was a curse and they were worried that other girls other sisters will not get a groom so the youth who came to our classes had incredibly low self esteem then the trainers many did not understand disability many did not understand markets and finally when we took the trained youth to companies companies asked us the most incredible questions some said um is it expensive to hire them some actually asked us will my non disabled workforce leave it's 4 years since we began this work several of the challenges we've overcome systematically one by one today we have 20 centers in 10 states and growing as i speak we've grown to be thank you we've grown to be the largest in india and last week we had visitors from the us who said they think we are perhaps the largest globally <laughs> but to me and to my team here uh, I think what is important is the impact which we have on the youth. It's truly transformational and truly magical and Amla can vouch for that especially on girls. Can you imagine a girl was selling flowers on the streets of our city Hyderabad. She was a graduate. We took her put her in our trainings and today she works in a media and entertainment company there was a youth who had his done his master he done bed and he could not get a village school master's job today he works in a multinational and teaches hindi to the other mba recruits i think many of the companies who 
help us make this happen are here today many of our mentors are here today and i thank them for being here amla so inspiring um could we ask the youth for jobs team to stand up and take a bow <laughs> are they here yes yes the youth for jobs team <laughs> the true heroes of this evening <laughs> so you changed you can't into you can so is your book about your work uh, the book is actually not about my work it's more because um, we realize that if we have to mainstream this work to create a more equal or a equitable society we actually have to spread this message of ability and disability very seamlessly that's why i thought of writing this book you can um having decided that i'll write the book uh, i worked almost like a one woman army um uh, researching the book because many of the stories in this book have not been ever written before so it meant a lot of digging in researching traveling to meet these people i was clear in some areas i decided that the book should be low cost so no one should hesitate to pick it up like a chetan bhagat book um it's the chapter shouldn't be long um also i wanted a wide audience to read it so i requested prasad kaipar he comes to hyderabad he does these transformational leadership workshop i requested him to come on board towards the end as a co-author to help me think through this parts of the book so this has been about a two and a half year long journey for me that's wonderful um i've read the book and i know it's a i mean it could work as a self help book for anyone facing challenges and it's deeply inspiring um so i heard the book had a fantastic launch at the jaipur literary festival and um we've come to know also that the jaipur literary festival is considered one of the top festivals in the world so um and that you spoke before uh, or after just after karan johar or was it before after, after. and so his packed audience stayed on yes. to listen to you okay <laughs> that's really nice um we also heard about um the the posts of the book trending to be the top 20 books at the festival yeah, so yeah. congratulations yes um would you like to share some of the inspiring stories yeah you know amla thanks for saying the top 20 i was completely amazed and to some extent i feel that what we set out is justified because the top 20 when i looked at the list had people like margaret atwood it had javed akhtar no less ruskin born all my heroes and i'm sure heroes and heroines of most of the people here i thought i'll share three stories three stories which are completely different and inspirational one is um arvind varma he's a turn around entrepreneur on a wheelchair he took a one crore loss making organization and built it to a mind blowing 316 crores enterprise the second is divya arora she's a theater activist on a wheelchair with cerebral palsy and the third is sanjay dung he built from scratch a travel agency of 90 crores and believe it or not he's blind uh so this is arvind varma so this is arvind varma in delhi and he's hardly been written about so when i told him i was coming he was there at the gate in his wheelchair happily saying hi um amazing person he was not born with disability when he was 14 holidaying with his cousins in the hills nearby he thought he was taking a shortcut to the car 
so he ran and it actually turned out to be a deep precipice he fell and broke his spine so the doctors told him he'd never walk again he told me even at 14 meter i realized the power to live and die is in my hands so when his mother would keep looking at him and crying he told his mother listen i'm taking a few steps forward if you cry i'll fall back from then she's been his best supporter arvin joined pwc but his bosses never sent him out on field trips much to his frustration so when he overheard his father saying that he was selling one of the companies on which he was on the board because it was making a 1 crore loss he told his father i would like to take it and run it his father was aghast he said son we don't have money to burn you don't have experience and you're on a wheelchair pwc said they'll give him leave for a year but arvind was clear he told me that he must burn his boats so much to his family annoyance he quit his job and started his new path of being an entrepreneur do you think it's easy to turn a loss making enterprise especially with these hurly burly north indian workers <laughs> unlike our south believe me he said they gave him such a tough time they used foul languages they went on strike but soon the workers realized that he was firm and this young leader on a wheelchair combined compassion with business acumen what he did was he looked at some of his loyal good workers outsourced some of the parts to them and many of them today have 3 crores turnover and drive cars of course he had other challenges for example he had to travel on flights and this was several years back he had to travel on flights for business or to meet his customers he remembers once the food packets were marked mumbai and he realized that the stewards had put him on a wrong flight when his ticket was delhi security guards would command him to stand up and one actually told him to scan that which was kept between his legs which was his urine bag his mother or sister if they traveled with him would feel really bad about this but he told them you know very frankly the truth that in india actually people are not prepared about disability we don't teach it in schools as many will tell you he said to me that the uneducated are better because they are frank and they tell you on the face it's the educated he says who are more complex in his club for example after he got his disability they refused his swimming membership though he could do the breast stroke well as if my disability is a disease he told me smilingly his challenges have never over overwhelmed him each time he went for his spine treatment to england he would knock at the door of the president of his competitor asking him to give an order to make the compressors at a value for money rate persistence pays he said 7 years later the president finally did it and today he has a 100% export oriented unit today arvind can actually rest rest back on his laurels he's turned around 1 crore to a profitable 316 crores but he's constantly thinking in fact he was discussing with me on how to set up a foundation which can retool his aged workers he says you know they have so much knowledge in them so why should age actually make them stop working that's really so true 
As I left Arvind, I thought to myself, what makes him tick is the fact that he is not self-absorbed. Instead, he is constantly thinking on how he can better others' lives and help them overcome their challenges. Amla? Wow. Just listening to these stories are uh, filling the heart. I wonder what it was like to actually meet these people in person and, and hear their stories directly. Um, there must be something in those souls who faced adversity with courage and, and never took no for an answer. Um, you've told us about the business aspect, which is very admirable, commendable. I mean, one crore to 316 crores, that would give anybody a, a great hope and a goal to achieve. But what about the other kind of stories? Do you have any creative stories, uh, stories of different fields of achievements where they've faced adversity and come out shining? Yeah, I love Sorry. That's Divya Aurora for you, young. She has cerebral palsy and she's India's only theatre activist on wheels. Now all prepared to make her mark in, can you guess, Bollywood. <laughs> um, I don't know, put up your hand, how many of you have seen this Hrithik Roshan's film Guzarish? Yeah, good. I mean, he acts as a quadriplegic on a wheelchair. I must have seen it at least six to seven times for his stupendous performance. So when the director, Sanjay Leela Bansali, decided to do this film, he met Divya Arora. And he was completely mesmerized by her energy on her wheelchair. So she began first working with the film by working with the scriptwriter, essentially she would tell the scriptwriter what does an injury mean to the spine if it's at the third level or the fourth level. Then Bansili actually invited her to Bombay to come on to the sets. Um, there she narrates and she enjoys narrating this. She says that she taught Hrithi Roshan helplessness. She taught him how to keep his hands by the side limp and what to do when you have a fly on your nose. She said, chuckling, that she made him stand and fall at least 25 times till he perfected the act. Like Arvind, Divya was also not born with disability. The doctors did it to her. When she was a baby, they did not realize she was turning blue. So oxygen was cut off from parts of her brain and that's how she got cerebral palsy and on a wheelchair for life. She told me with fire in her voice, if this was the best, we would have sued those doctors. Of course, in India, they couldn't do anything. So she traveled and lived with her parents in Paris and London learning foreign languages, learning to be independent and one day decided that what she's going to do is she's going to perform on a wheelchair because she said that every time I act on a wheelchair people will realize there's disability, ability in disability and this is much much better than giving a long lecture or a sermon. So she translated several French plays after she came to India did several solo acts, some with people like Tom Alter, and each time she got rave reviews for her work. She's done this actually across the country. Uh, I must bring her to Hyderabad sometime. Um, she has a great sense of humor. She was narrating this incident to me where she was getting this Dr. Batra's um, Positive Health Award. And it was being given by none else than Sanjay Dutt, the film star. 
um so she says sanjay that was so emotional he just looked and cried and cried on the screen on on, on the stage till she finally told him excuse me will you stop crying and give me my award <laughs> so now divya she actually has a agent when i was with her the agent said madam tumhara appointment hai kal ke liye so she is appointed one guy with a little money to be her agent for bollywood and she's done a script which um she said took her almost two and a half years to do because she types only with one finger but you see she says it's not impossible for me i could do it and the script now is with a hyderabad zone director nagesh kukunur <laughs> it's a full fledged bollywood romantic one includes running around tree she says and she hopes she can act in it i never never stop dreaming she told me as she waved goodbye to me and i realized that amla that is the mantra of her success beautiful stories um it's really wonderful that uh, bollywood has reflected these characters and you know brought the sensibility to the indian audiences hopefully it will trickle down into our social norms um i have to use this opportunity meera if you haven't seen upri <laughs> you must promise me you'll see it <laughs> the whole team in fact we'll have a special screening for all of you uh, <laughs> and call as many as the young people you can yeah who 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 have disabilities well for those of you who haven't seen upri it's nagarjuna my hus- my dear husband nagarjuna's latest film in telugu In fact they made it in Telugu and uh, Tamil it's a two bilingual film Upiri in Telugu and Thora in Tamil and uh, it's based it's the official indianized version of the French film Intouchables where uh, the protagonist is a millionaire but in a wheelchair um so yeah so and a lot of, there's been a overwhelming response to it uh, about the sensibilities of a the treatment to the character and the fact that a hero has been willing to do such a role and two is the way that they have treated the subject so you see it's so appropriate we brought you here in discussion with us hamla <laughs> yes and uh, uh, we are all so so proud of the film you must we will have a showing for youth for jobs for sure um i listed out a few more things to ask you before i forget um so you've told us about people in wheelchairs would you like to share s- uh, and people with um, seeing disability would you like to say share some other stories yeah the last story i think i'll share is of sanjay dung who yeah. i mentioned before he's built from scratch this 90 crore travel agency and he's blind a uh, amazing person you know he can just rattle off these routes and costs without looking into a computer his customers told me they all prefer to talk to him rather than his sighted colleagues because he can tell you calculating in his mind the shortest routes at value for money rates uh, when sanjay was young his mother used to worry why is this little boy falling down again and again the doctor said he has high myopia by 7 his one eye was practically blind uh if he did a little bit of activity the retina would go out of place and they had to insert it back with surgery in those days you didn't have this i suppose advances in science which we have now um his other eye began hurting so after 10th class he stayed back at home by 25 he was completely blind he had a, he said he thirsted for knowledge 
and had to look at other sources rather than books obviously so um what he did was he just devoured greedily radio shows like the bbc the cnn deutsche welle little did he realize that one day all this knowledge of culture and communication would actually be useful to him one point day he heard that there was a job next door uh, in a travel agency so without telling anyone he he went there for the job needless to say the manager was absolutely aghast to see this youngster blind applying for a travel agency job but he was so impressed with the wealth of the knowledge he had he for example at that point of time the sita travels was being t- taken over by koni he was so impressed that this boy knew it that he gave him a job he learned the tricks of the trade and decided one day that he would set up his own travel agency so sanjay describes he took one table one chair one landline no cell phone those days one assistant who would go on a scooter and deliver the tickets and pick up the checks and the garage was his office it's great fun he says when if you have limited money because what you start doing is you think out of the box um, and use your imagination so uh, what he did was he used to give these big ads which were free in noida times with screaming headlines saying cheapest ticket delhi to dubai every day <laughs> it so happened that there was a secretary um of a large group who was feeling very frustrated her boss was traveling next day and she just could not get through her travel agency because it was landline the landline is completely busy on her table was this large ad so she dialed sanjay's number and she was very pleased with the way he dealt with his voice he the way he attended the call so she decided to give him a chance sanjay narrated to me you know that incident he said there was i sitting and at about 6 o'clock this huge merc turned up outside his car the door opened and there stepped out mr vachani who at that time was head of the largest electronic group western electronics mr vachani was absolutely stunned to see who his new travel agent was youngster garage table chair and blind but he was so impressed with the kind of services he gave him that for sanjay there was no looking back and needless to say it was his first first class ticket his dentist brother has decided to join him and an opened an office as sanjay told me why wait for patients to pull out your teeth when i have ready made customers waiting <laughs> i asked him whether you know he has challenges um, sanjay very practically told me maybe because it's the fact that he was not born blind but became blind gradually so he was prepared for it and this helped him think out of box he also clearly told me that if god takes away some faculties other faculties definitely become sharper for example for him memory recall and retention are much better phone numbers he says he remembers very well and a voice he never never forgets he says counting his blessings that is so true when um, i think we have heard uh, maybe a number of us have heard about the when one ability is uh, less then the others become so much more sharpened and uh, perhaps even the sensitivity of the individual to to things which the rest of us take for granted um these are so inspiring stories mira um would you would you tell us about the common thread in all these stories you've been sharing 
the takeaway and the common thread? A good question, Amla. I think the common thread binding these stories is that all three of them choose not to live a life of complaints and misery. They realized that everyone has a potential, worked hard, stretched themselves to achieve this potential. They were never overcome by their challenges and never stopped dreaming. And this is what I think makes them not just smart, efficient leaders, but what we call wise, effective leaders. You've also written about the lessons these inspirational lives have on us. Um, yeah, for everyone. Yeah. So would you like to Yeah, say I something? think it would be nice if uh, you read this out, Amla. Would you do that? Yeah. yeah. Right yeah. here? Yeah. The, the introduction? Yeah. These are actually what lessons it has for others. I can, so you can. What you are and what you bring to the world is a unique DNA or essence. That essence can be taken for granted. So the skills that we learn through our education or through appreciation that people bestow upon us are given importance. However, these fade into insignificance when compared to the unique, invisible essence that we bring to the world. We become aware of them when we lose them. When you tap into this DNA, it clarifies purpose, evokes passion, unleashes power and harvests creativity. You, the reader, are a unique human being. You may ask how to awaken yourself to this potential. Read the best practices we pre present. Reflect on the excuses you give for not tapping into your potential. It is, be is it because you are lazy or feel you do not need to make an effort to improve yourself? The caterpillar does not become a butterfly for itself. Without butterflies, the world would have fewer flowers. So Meera, this is truly a self-help book. <laughs> I think every one of us can have inspiration. And what about hundreds of young people who commit suicide because they didn't make the marks or they think they failed, um, not realizing they have so many more opportunities. I was just talking to um, a district SP who said that uh, the percentage of people, youth uh, committing suicide is so high that the police force themselves feel ob obligated to start um, counseling centers and support groups for these students. I think you, your book could make a, a real difference to so many lives, Meera. Yeah, thanks, Amla. I think there's so much to be done. Um, we need to keep giving hope to the youth constantly in different kinds and the book is a small attempt for it um, but yes this book has indeed been a journey for me after each meeting I was sometimes really silent uh, moved to silence writing these stories uh, revisiting them I edited the book I took time off in California um, actually created in me what I call positive dissatisfaction a desire to to do more and more and um, today this book is for all of you to say that if they can every one of you can thank you Thank you, Meera. Thank you for the wonderful work you do and the inspirational book and keep going. We're all behind you. Thank you.
Thank you. Many, many. Not just one. Mira, that was great uh, presentation of a very complex problem, and I think I'm sure the audience has many, many questions to ask. And we have a new mic runner. Yeah, Mira. Um, this was on my first trip to the U.S. in the late 90s. I'd gone to visit my sister. And I went there, when I went there, I put, it was like a shock to me to see so many people on wheelchairs, you know, having some disability or the other. And I asked my sister, I said, how come there's so many, such a, such a, I mean, you'd think it's an advanced country and, you know, developed country and there's so many people with uh, so many disabilities. So then she turns around and tells me, so do you think there are no the people with no disabilities in India? It's just that you don't see them. They are, they are condemned to a life at home, you know, forever. Because they don't have any facilities whatsoever. So, and then she says, it's, you know, ours is a society in India where we think that, you know, uh, it's just their karma. They're born like that, they have to be left like that. And speaking from personal experience, I've had a brother, my husband's brother, who was a quadriplegic in bed for more than 25 years before he passed away. And I know the frustration of people like that, you know, where you have no access to, he's never been out of the, the, the room in all those years. And so what is it that we can tell, uh, I mean, what is it that we should do as a society? Also, I represent an NGO which works for hearing impaired children. And, uh, and I know there's, there's so much that needs to be done and there's so little that we are able to do. What is it that the government can do? Un until you institutionalize it, we cannot do. I mean, as a society, we can just, you know, uh, uh, as uh, NGOs, we can do a little bit. But the government has to do much more. I think uh, two things. One is, you're right, the Prime Minister himself has launched the accessibility recently. Uh, I think that's a good signal, you know, for everyone. They've also launched the inclusion audit for the first time. But having said that, personally, though I've sat in senior positions in the government, I really believe that we cannot wait for the government to tackle these problems. I think every one of us should be a change maker. If disability is an issue which is important to you, we should just see how, what is the kind of work we can do so that it adds together creates a ripple and creates a bigger impact. So Sunita, if you're working for hearing impaired, you should join hands and see how together one should make a bigger impact. But yes, in India, accessibility is such a major problem. Even today we were, you know, helping people with wheelchairs <laughs> to come across. Buildings are not accessible. Toilets are not accessible. Everything is a problem and that's why you don't see people with disability on the roads and that's why people don't understand disability. You know, you can't blame anyone. They don't understand because you don't see them around. Yeah. Um, Amla, anytime you want to add, just take the mic. Yeah, madam. Uh, my name is Kiran. It's not a question. It's a basically a thought. Uh, like Amala, madam, just now mentioned that people are committing suicide. She mentioned about students. It's not just students, you know. Or people you know, who have you know, all the things understand, uh, I mean, all the things understand, still they are uh, committing suicide. I think, as a thought, p uh, books like this, because you know, uh, people with uh, disabilities, they are doing wonders. If books like these are introduced in school cur curriculum, during their childhood itself, you know, they, they'll be made strong. So you think, so you think your uh, book should be introduced, I mean, at least these kind of books should be introduced as a curriculum. Uh, sixth to seventh standard, not even tenth, etc. Yeah. At the childhood itself, you know, they should be made strong. Yeah. Th thanks for this. Actually, just as I was walking in, one of my friends, Lakshmi Pati, said that he shared this book with his... Was it Lakshmi or who told me this? I forget. Ah, oh, yeah, sorry. He said, uh, Prabhakar said that he shared this book with his 14-year-old daughter. Um, and he said that they really enjoyed reading it. Uh, and that's the age, actually, where you can make an impact. So would you like to say something about your daughter's... Uh, 
हेलो मैम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट्स अ ग्रेट ग्रेट प्लेजर टू हियर यू एंड आई एम एक्सट्रीमली फॉर्चुनेट टू बी हियर दिस इवनिंग आई हैव अ स्मॉल क्वेश्चन मैम आई हैव विजुअली इम्पेयर सिंस माय बर्थ बट आई हैव बीन वेरी वेरी प्रिविलेज टू स्टडी इन अ नॉर्मल स्कूल आई एम ऑल्सो अ सिंगर सो आई एम वेरी प्रिविलेज टू हैव ऑल दोज फेसिलिटीज लाइक एनी अदर नॉर्मल चाइल्ड बट as i grew up i saw this that our society is not very inclusive we um of course the special schools uh, give us a lot of opportunity to be independent but uh, after graduating from those schools we have to work and live in the normal society so how do you think we can bring about this inclusion in the society and make people more aware of this yeah. Before you sit down would you like to sing something small to us before i answer your question manzile rusva hai khoya hai rasta lovely that was really lovely thank you so much uh this is uh, dr chakravarti i am a retired ias officer i am a great admirer of you meera i have read your book and of course amla and your husband i have seen many of your pictures i am your admirer too thanks a lot i will i will make one small thought and one very small question to um you talked about the reaching one's potential uh, there is a book called jonathan livingston seagull you might have read it perhaps it's a very small book the story is very short a number of seagulls are go up and then swoop on the sea catch fish they are doing it in a routine manner one day one uh, seagull thought why not i go slightly higher up and see what i do they all mocked at him he went up fell flat got injured but he didn't leave it at that he went again and again and one day he went right up and swooped a huge fish then all of them applauded and said you have reached your potential you have, what he said about potential everyone has a potential it is for us to make it and make it a success that's my that's a thought it's a supplement to your story a small question that you can is a title uh, which is very uh, appreciative barack obama said you can and it became viral in the world did did you pick up the title from him or did he pick up the title from you <laughs> thanks chakravarti garu of course he picked it up from me and up to me yeah um Uh, madam just one here uh, yeah, one question uh, i just wanted to understand what is it that we uh, who are perceived normal in the sense what is it that we really need to understand about disability because i believe uh, the way the disabled so called disabled 
look at disability and the way we look at it, I believe is completely different. I don't think they look at it as a disability. I don't know what they look at it as. So we are perceived normal. So what is it that we need to understand from their point of view of what disability actually means and what it means? Yeah, I think uh, I think what we'll do is I'll answer first, and then anyone from the audience who's disabled themselves perhaps can give a authentic answer to you. <laughs> but my answer would be that I think what happens is there's a lot of ignorance about disability. So in India, which is a society which is obsessed by people looking similar people you know everyone wants fair human beings everyone wants fit human beings so when people look different when people obviously behave differently um, there's a sense of not understanding it so a lot of the manifestations of what we see in society people sometimes laugh people sometimes stare people uh, don't give them jobs unless there's someone like us working for them um, and those are the challenges. I think that if you believe that all of us are equal, uh, irrespective of what we look like, what we don't have, then I think there will be an equal world. So the main thing is that how do we, each of us, leave this podium today with the belief that everyone is equal, everyone has ability, so give them an equal chance. Anyone who who has disability here would like to say something about this? He says that, what do the disabled think? You know? Can I, could I request this young lady here? Could you say? How, do you, how would you like people to tell me about this? Uh, hello, I am Lulu. Uh, I am working from GYD Health. So, and... Uh, I have studied a met, uh, matriculation. I cannot walk. So I like to be independent and everyone should admire my talent. So, uh, so I want everyone, whoever is disabled, like they need a chance to work. Yes. That's it, I guess. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well done, Lulu. I hope to learn from you one day, very soon. I'd like to ask uh, Mira a question. Uh, the question is very simple. I'd like to know more about the NGO which you run. And uh, you said it's youth for jobs. How do you help them find jobs? Do you interview them beforehand? I suppose you do. Also, where can a person with a disability approach you or one of the NGOs to be able to get help from you? And yeah. where are, which are the places? You said there are 20 of them. Can you just tell us which places they exist? Um, very simple answer is that you can look at our website. It's youthforjobs.org. Uh, we are in 10 states. Across AP and Telangana, we have uh, six centers and one in Hyderabad. And we work mostly with, not mostly, only with youth with disability who's who are from poor families. Uh, we take urban youth but mostly rural youth uh, because we feel that they don't understand markets and no one supports them and it's very hard work it's actually easy to do urban but we believe that if we need to leave behind a better country we need to work that's our, our obsession so if there are any youth with disability you just need to look at our website we have a online registration form which you can apply yeah, to one, one last question do you have a phone helpline where the children who are in the rural areas can ring up, approach you, talk to you and get some help before coming to one of the centers for help. No, we don't have a toll line. It's a very good idea, perhaps yeah. sometime. Yeah, there is an organization here in Hyderabad. Mm -hmm. They have this helpline and anybody, it's a toll free number. Anybody, anywhere can get help regarding education, how to study further, how to get uh, some kind of uh, a job as well as study all those things. So maybe if you can arrange for that. Yeah, or maybe you can connect us to that person. He can help us. Certainly. I'll, I'll give you send the number. Thank yeah. you. Can I ask a question? Uh, hi, Mira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a guitar. <laughs> uh, 
just wanted to know whether uh, your NGO, your organization is actually working with schools, especially the uh, elite schools, to you know have this inclusive nature, accepting people who we consider as disabled as just one of themselves, and not anyone different. Thanks, uh, Sangeeta. That's a lovely question. In fact, um, what we decided was that what you call advocacy um, is so important. So we, in fact, are setting up a new cell for that. Um, my new co colleague or chief volunteer, I don't know if she's here. Alpana? Okay, she just moved. So she's supporting us in that. Um, and what we're doing is we are, the book is one attempt in this, but we're going to start working in schools, in colleges, in institutions and schools are extremely important but of course we need po possibly to think of a different approach volunteer base etc but very very important we need to catch them young yeah, yeah. good evening uh, Meera it was wonderful you know uh, listening about your book and about all those lovely people well I've been fortunate enough uh, to be working uh, or heading a uh, school and I think we've had multiple students with various problems actually uh, seek admission and many of them have actually succeeded in life and sitting before me is one of my favorite students Venkatesh would also share his views I think give him a loud round of applause honestly because he's done us proud I'd like to begin by answering a question that one gentleman had asked saying that people like us who are normal you know what is it that we can do well, I think it's our mindsets that are handicapped, and we need to actually put that away. So initially, when I started giving admissions to a couple of kids, I questioned myself. I said, do I really know what I'm supposed to do with these kids? To be honest, I didn't. It was just that, you know, that you could just open your heart and say, you know, give them a fair chance at least, and, you know, they'll survive. And believe me, right from children with autism to children in, who've come in wheelchairs with brittle bone syndrome, they've started their own company, some of them, gaming and otherwise, because otherwise they're totally bedridden. But I think Venkatesh has been, you know, one big inspiration to the entire team in our school because he stood out as just like any other kid. And I think one thing we should all realize is that the last thing that they would want from us is, you know, um, sympathy. They just want to be treated normal, and believe me, they're better than us in multiple ways. So I think I'll ask Venkatesh to share a couple of his views. By the way, congratulations to your work. We're so happy to hear about it. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Meera, ma'am, you're doing an amazing work. I, I'm, I really like the idea of uh, Youth for Jobs. And to everybody here, you know, I, I thank for making such an amazing evening possible. Well, I'd like to introduce myself a bit. I'm uh, Venkatesh Potluri, and I've done my master's by research in computer science from uh, IIIT Hyderabad. Um, I'm now uh, with Microsoft. And I'm, I'm, I'm honestly speak saying this, uh, getting here was not a cakewalk. Thanks to a lot of support from family, teachers, you have, like the person right, and uh, uh, you know, I had an amazing set of friends and all well-wishers who believe in me say I can do I can do it Right. I have uh, two things to say first is uh, I think there seriously needs to be uh, like the people need to stop stereotyping as to people with person with certain disability can do only certain job or he, he can opt only for, for a certain profession I think that's n that's no limitation. I, that shouldn't be a limitation. And uh, this, the second thing is, uh, there's a lot of technology that can enable per people with different disabilities. And most of this technology is uh, very expensive. So I think it will be nice if we, uh, like people who are doing these kind of initiatives can uh, you know, do something to make this technology reachable to a, a greater number of people. As far as far as my contribution to this goes, I uh, do. I am a researcher in assistive technology, 
and I've worked on making math accessible and I've open sourced my uh, project. Wow. <laughs> Thank Th you. Thank you, Venkatesh. You really inspire us. I think we should be in touch. And just to tell you now what is happening is I think Youth for Jobs work has reached a level where people have started giving us software donations. For example, recently someone has come forward saying that there's this new software for low vision youth and they said that if you want to put it in any of your training center, we'll gift it to you. So, you know, very happily we'll share whatever we know with schools like yours. I'm glad I came here with uh, Shekhar. Yes. Shekhar, you've got to stand up and say. Uh, Shekhar was a very pleasant surprise to me. Uh, when he came in, I, I'm into recruitment of, of a different genre. So first thing it came to mind, okay, let me do something. And it's just a matter of about three weeks. And he came in and he was introduced. So you know, the first thing that came into mind was bichara kuch karna hai types. But it took me some time to understand that how do I pack him and sell it to a, a prospective recruiter. Lemon tree was in mind. And he stays in Khairatabad, so he called, said, I want to come and meet you again. I said, why do you want to come? He came in exactly 10 minutes, he reached. Hmm. He, is, he has 10 marathon races he has won across India. Wow. Not only marathon, he's a bicycle, he's got a special bike. And he can beat any of the so-called normal people. <laughs> I mean, we are more disabled than him. <laughs> Shekhar. Shekhar is from Nalagunda. Okay. He's not so conversant. But I said, you know, when you said rural background, yeah. he's got a second round of interview in Lemon Tree. Want to say something? Can. Hello, ma'am. Tell me what you're doing. Yeah. I'm going to go to the village. I'm going to go to the village. So, but uh, uh, 2006 lo na ki injury hai indan, matta current shock hulla. So, na ko two legs problem on matta. Ok leg thesis sir, inko leg bottom finger uh, thesis sir. And uh, hand right hand also. Mm. So, antak mundu ni no cycling teli do na ko, swimming teli do, badminton ella arthara teli do, rock climbing, chail ano ne di, chail ek pain. Mm. <laughs> and k walk, uh, ilan in challenges I know, but I like, I selected in uh, two uh, two sports, uh, cycling and running. I completed my 10 kilometer marathon in 11, wow. 11 marathons. My best time is 1 hour 14 minutes <laughs> and 10 kilometer. And I did, I attempted 200 kilometers drive with the HBC Bicycling Club, but I didn't complete uh, uh, 200 kilometers. I completed 169 kilometers in 16 hours with non non gearable cycle. With but I'm unhappy. Why should I uh, reach? Uh, uh, sorry, no. Run run one hundred kilometer. Endu ko reach kalle dena ko chinnna baadun dhan bata. Yeah. Ah, na khoo pundi. Ni run one hundred kilometer ka do. Inka chest ana ni. And ni no ka even Shedaman and Kutnanu, then either Ipain Tarata, uh, all over India, Ladakh to Kanyakumari, the, my dream. Yeah, uh, with 10 disabled peoples, all over um, east, west, north, south, uh, total uh, four sides. Uh, uh, it's approximately 4,100 kilometers, 48 to 50 days journey. Uh, then a chail and could no, I need a uh, all sub all our support and help. And now I'm the last day, uh, April 3rd, I completed a 10k marathon uh, in Delhi. And again, I'm going to Dehradun also. It's a uh, 21 kilometers. This is my first marathon and half marathon. Mm. I hope I did it. Very good. <laughs> and I can do more, I want to do something. I can bring out uh, like that my uh Ilan Kori can mata Nalan Dualani. Chalaman in Lalo Kurchan Badbutano, Intakmundu, Eurochapar, Chaniputana, Chinichin Pilala. Silly reasons. Dad got in the sir cotadu some 
Last time I went to Vikarabad, there were also 50 people dead, only students. Say, chinna chinna problems are only. Thank you, ma'am. I just want to tell you, first, we wish you all the best. This, if you get into Lemon Tree, the story of Lemon Tree is here. Patu is a good friend of mine and he's an amazing employer. So, um, I also want to give him a small suggestion in case he wants to improve his English and learn computers, let him come to our free training center for some time. He'll improve his English, which employers look for, learn computers. Enroll in one of our training centers and then you can move forward with Lemon Tree. <laughs> I have a point here. I want to talk. Uh, I come from actually the Atlanta Foundation. Uh, we conduct cycling rides every year. Like we have a signature ride, like the Freedom Ride, Peace Ride. And my CEO is Dinana Tarpan Halli. So because he's talking about cycling, I was a bit excited. So, uh, and he wants to do 200 kilometers. So actually my CEO wanted to personally come in and hand over, uh, he has written books also, so he wanted to hand over it and because of time constraint, you know, he couldn't. And then when he talked about cycling, I really felt like I was, it, it was like uh, I really want to do something and then I want to give him a chance because we have a peace ride project that is coming up and wherein like he can motivate many other people for cycling and he can come to us at least. I can do something for him because of his interest in cycling. We want people like that. He can be an icon for me. Then he can just come forward. There is something like he can do for charity. He can work for help your NGO. It's something to do with all NGOs together coming up. And we'll be doing for them. Like they'll be volunteering. And then they can bring out things. And we can make it out for your NGO. So I wanted to actually talk and share it. He'll share it with you. I mean, come out. Then uh, I want to take your name, email ID, and whatever you have your details. Please come. I'll facilitate you. Yeah. Uh, I'm Seishu. I, for, I work for the Atlanta Foundation, and we have also employed uh, yes. people from Youth for Jobs. <laughs> I know. And uh, they are very. And one, just one point I want to put forward. Maybe it's my personal observation because I haven't really worked with uh, disabled people. But to my observation, what I've seen, they are a bit more emotional than most of us, than the normal people. So we have to tackle that emotional sense in them, make them very strong inside. It's not necessary that we should sympathize. They, are, they also have their inbuilt talents, which they can bring out. And let not feel very, that society should feel sympathetic about them. Not necessary, if they can bring it out. So this should may become a challenge for them, that yeah, I am this much strong, and I don't need your sympathy. That's what I'm actually looking for. I've seen them. They're very, very emotional. And uh, like they cry very fast. I mean, simply for this thing, they feel very, uh, they feel it like, uh, you know, I'm being looked upon. Actually, we don't do. That's what. And I always try to make them understand. This is where you have to really challenge yourself. You're very talented. Just bring it. Bring it. Up. Because they have a determination inside. But they think people are looking down. You know, it shouldn't be the case. So that's what we actually have to take care. And I wish again, I would definitely want you to. It's an opportunity. Please avail it. Thank you. I think this is Vikram turning out to be a real mantan. But people are partnering with each other merrily. Madam, uh, good evening. Uh, here. Yeah. Madam, you mentioned about uh, generally uh, uh, we being self-absorbed in nature, you know, and uh, where we don't extend ourselves beyond ourselves, uh, which you have done. I was just curious, uh, what is that quantum jump which one does or something which happens to somebody which makes them take that leap where they extend themselves beyond themselves? I think everyone has um, the need to do some good. I think that it's there in every one of us. We are born with it. Uh, what happens is for some, I think that exists, but it's not, it's masked by other things. For some, it's more manifest. 
um, and these are actually choices which we make in life but my answer would be that every single person has this feeling of doing good you may begin by doing it in the home at a small level and some people choose to do it at a big, bigger level but everyone's doing good in a small way and that's why india is such a lovely country thanks meera i'm here my name is subhadra and i'm wearing three hats the first hat is that my secretary is totally blind i am at lv prasad i institute and as an employee of a blind secretary i can tell you that he's as good and as bad as my other secretaries so you know like he's uh, he has his own good points he has his own bad points he gets scolding and thrashing from me like other secretaries when he doesn't do well he gets my plus points and my appraisal a uh, good marks when he's good but one thing is that he's as capable or incapable as my other secretary so when you write to lv prasad institute and you don't get a reply it's it could be any of the secretaries there so you know so they they are as good and as bad Uh, so we are very happy you know uh, at our center we've employed more than 100 of our own clients uh, venkatesh has also been with us so but that's my hat as an employee and that's my thought as a person who's employed a blind person now my other hat is of a doctor who treats children with blindness so i was very uh, you know curious or i was very upset at the two stories that you told us about people blind uh, maybe this audience doesn't know but india has the largest number of blind children in the world and we did blind school surveys along with many others and we found that 60% of children in blind schools need not have been blind both the cases that you told us could have easily been prevented could have easily been diagnosed and treated and they need not have become blind when i came from kashmir ikade irve samstram garchi poyindi naku hyderabad lo so i found that in my hospital we were getting these blind babies and then i went to these children's children centers where these children were being born and told them that look i am going to come to your hospital and examine the eyes of these newborns in our country the newborns eyes are not examined which is essential in foreign country so i just want to tell this audience that some of your children or your you know loved ones are blind because nobody checked their eyes at birth i'm very proud that after 15 years of working here because initially when i started all the children's hospital closed their doors they didn't allow us to come they thought we are trying to pry on their you know case sheets they thought we are going to you know be judgmental on what they are doing they thought lv prasad is a you know uh, research center and they are going to do some research on our baby so uh, it was fernandez hospital and bas basan sani hospital which initially allowed me to come in and say that do what you want we don't know what you are doing because we don't know anything about eye health eye health is not taught in our medical curriculum for babies unfortunately to anybody it's not taught to asha workers it's not taught to uh, nurses it's not taught to eye specialists it's not taught to pediatricians so that is the problem and i want everybody to be aware that today after 15 years in hyderabad sikandrabad we don't see blind children who are untreated blind because our team goes every week to all the hospitals and examines all the babies we are working with government of india to make this in telangana in andhra and in whole country government works slowly as somebody said they are making the draft we're going again we are working there but what i want to tell here is that we can start ourselves we don't have to wait for government we didn't wait for government we had one laser machine which we needed to treat these babies it was in the operation theater i used to finish the whole city rounds i used to go home i had small children treat you know put them to sleep sing lullabies get them to do their homework then take the laser machine in my car and go up to dil shukhnagar and kokkadpally and treat those babies in the night and you know come back home at 3 o'clock 4 o'clock and you know in lv prasad we have to reach 7 o'clock we locked the door at 7 so what i want to say is that it's one thing to deal with disability but it's very important to prevent that disability and all of us should try to look at opportunities where you invest not for treatment but to prevent and we can prevent at least lots of childhood blindness we are a shameful country where we have these blind children and we think children become blind you know they go to blind schools and that's it yeah. but they need not have been blind so i'm very happy to work with anybody who wants to prevent this blindness and we're very happy in our city now we don't have untreated blindness yeah thanks thanks for this uh, doctor i just want to tell you that sanjay dung is 50 years old so as i told in my story technology then was not at the levels 
and of course in india screening is not done and we know blindness is avoidable yeah, as of now technology is available that's it's right very simple absolutely. it's not high tech absolutely it's absolutely just requires a torch and yeah. a cell phone camera to that's detect right. blindness in baby absolutely so absolutely. No, but it's not being done we are aware of that absolutely so and i, I, I think i want to enlist the support of everybody yeah. to help us make this reality absolutely. that it comes into absolutely absolutely i am also having a third hat of a child who had a disability we fought the system we made sure that he goes to school normal school and i'm very proud to say that the first school he went to all the city schools refused him admission all these top schools and it was a small ladies two room house just next to my house who said just let him come to the school and you know as long as he doesn't beat other children we are fine my son used to become naked whole day in that school for the first two months they just took care of him they didn't care and today he is at bit pilani goa scoring 100 out of 100 in all his no work <laughs> thank you for this your story is really inspiring i think what this you know tells me today ajay and vikram is that all of us work you know but still a lot of us don't know about each other's work lv prasad of course is an icon along with a lot of other i institutes like arvind and we really admire the work done by your institute no doubt about it i uh, in fact uh, continuing from where she left i wanted to say one thing uh, there are all of us can do our bit in sensitizing everyone else around us right. and in uh, to 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 the disabled treating them with respect and not with uh, disdain uh, i know my children went to vidyaranya a disabled student was treated in the same way with the same respect as an able child and the kind of sensitivity that our children got towards the disabled was huge in the most normal course of their living all of us are employers in one way or the other we could give space to uh, to to the disabled and give them employment we could create facilities which would make them uh, make them possible to get assimilate into our uh, our lives there's much that we can do if we want to yep. mandan is a very large group and we would be happy in any way which we could figure out to um, to help out we have 10000 people on our rolls today mm -hmm. and uh, we could reach out to all of them with anything that uh, that we, that could uh, uh, i mean help for instance uh, if there are employments to be given probably we could put it up on our facebook group perfect. or in many many ways we could uh, work with you perfect thanks ajay for that and i think actually what ajay says was really wonderful of course offering mantan is one thing but more important the question which everyone asks what can i do everyone can make a small beginning first being sensitive and second is if you are a person working somewhere try and employ one or two youth and that's a good beginning which you can make with very little effort we have one last question but i just thought i'll i've been wanting to say this to sunita you have been started something on hearing impaired we have a society which is listening impaired Good evening everyone. I am Shraddha Kedia. This is the first time I am interacting with so many people. I am a quadriplegic from 16 years. I have a lovely family. They never let me feel like I am a handicap. I am blessed with a joint family. And sometimes I feel I am well in financially also I am fit but sometimes I feel that I should start earning so that I can help other people who are in need. So this is from last one month I am going and interacting with people. I have seen Ophiri also and Guzari. I went for an event on 30th with Nagarjuna sir. So I am feeling good. I got impressed with your title ability in your disability. That time only I decided that I have to attend this program. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, one second, uh, Meera. Just one uh, word I'd like to say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she was just talking about the screening program for blind children, for you know, to screen blindness. This is available for hearing impaired also, yeah. and this is a compulsory thing, you know, abroad. Here also, I think we should just put enough pressure on the government to make it a compulsory thing. It's called a Berat test. That and just quickly one more thing: consanguineous marriages they lead to a lot of disabilities. That is one thing I think you know. Uh, uh, 
I try in, in any platform, I try to share this information because we get so much of the, from the data that we collect. The, almost 20% of children born in, uh, you know, consanguineous marriages are born with disabilities. So don't marry your first cousins or your uncle and aunt to keep the money intact. That's the uh, message, okay? Uh, be before before uh, the last question, uh, we are circulating a register. Uh, we want all of you to enter your name, uh, email ID and phone number so that uh, we get back to you and connect with you. And uh, those of you who are new to Manthan, we will make sure that you are put on our mailing list and get invites to all events uh, hereafter. Yeah. Before the last question, we forgot to answer Shravya's question in her in her singing. Uh, Shravya had a question on inclusive society. Shravya had a question on inclusive society. On how do you yes. create an inclusive society? Yes. Shravya, yes. was that your question? Yes, ma'am. What can we do to um, make the society more inclusive? Did you mean by what can you do or what can the society what do? What can society do? Yeah, I think that's very simple. I think we should start education about disability in schools. See, Vidya Ranya and one or two of the schools which you attend are special schools. All schools are not like that. You won't imagine one week back I spoke to government school principals and teachers and they all asked me whether I was God giving jobs to the youth with disability because they say that in their schools there are no special educators. So the blind, the hearing impaired just come and sleep. So they think they are useless. So there's such a huge divide. But if we begin with this education, even Sangeeta asked the question, in school if we begin and catch them young, educating people about disability I think then you know very that you'll have a, a better world yeah uh, just not mo more of a comment actually earlier it was mentioned about how do we see the normal people how do we see them differently how they see us differently uh, my through my experience that I have gone through looking at my parents and other friends I would say that you know it's a definition of normal because over a period of time, I started wearing specs from the age seven. So I am not normal. Because a kid was looking at me, saying that I'm not normal because I'm wearing specs, because he was not wearing specs. So it's a definition of normal that I personally feel we all need to get to terms with as we grow older. And then we start appreciating the non-normal that we think about because now we have become abnormal. Right? So that's the way that the whole picture starts shaping up in our mind. But it is easier said than done. Because one my uncle who is 80 plus and he gets into a car and goes out on the street, he lives near Kamenini in King Koti, and people say, Are budde tu bahar a gaya, ghar ja ke na. So that's what we get to see uh, for age people. And in India, a couple of my friends, they didn't want to come back. Didn't want to come back because we do not have any facilities is what they call. But the point is, we do not care. We don't care after a particular time and we don't care after a particular age. So that's the thing that I was talking about. That's my comment. Good morning. So I have a question. If a person loses hope because of his family, and he is disabled. So how can we build hope in him? If a person loses hope because of his family and he is disabled, so how can we build hope in him? I, I agree, you know, uh, it's difficult. But he, you know, friends, outsiders, that's why school, school is very important. Uh, but generally, except... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. One day we'll put this into the school curriculum. But as you can see, many of the people who spoke, the family, especially in urban areas, the family is the biggest support. In urban areas, I've seen very few cases where the family doesn't support. In rural areas, sometimes the families don't support. But school is a big beginning. The friends and others can act as teachers and others can be supportive. the third time. <laughs>
when I was at school many years ago, we had a class learning Braille. None of us were blind, but it was emphasized that we should be useful around blind people. The same thing, my granddaughter, uh, who went to school in England, her classes uh, included sign language. And uh, I was out with her uh, several times shopping in a supermarket, and she was able to immediately sense, here's a group of deaf people, um, and she started to talk to them in sign language and gave them some help. These are the very small ways that we can do so much. And with so much of building in Hyderabad, for example, uh, every new store or shop or building office, I think we should be asking, are you disabled friendly? And if not, boycott them. This is Yes, it is a rule, but... GHMC won't give you building clearance now if you don't have those no, facilities. but there are many older, older shops... Old buildings may not, yes, but the new buildings. Yes, there are many older shops and buildings which are not yet. And I think they should be... One should be uh, very particular to boycott them if they are not uh, adjusting. It's just a small adjustment. Thanks, Mayu, for this. That's a wonderful... If any of you run schools, you know, teach sign language to the kids, teach them Braille, so that that's a good way of understanding disability. I know, everyone's telling me, huh, so many stories are not captured, but that's India for you, you know. So thanks, who knows, maybe there'll be a sequel.